Hi, I'm Joe from Miniature Landscape Hobbies. I think most of you know by now that I like to paint tanks and other military vehicles. I really like to paint tanks and other military vehicles. Well, today I'm going outside my comfort zone and trying something a little different. Today, I'm going to paint trucks. So here's the riverboard section we built in last week's video, and I really like it. I think it turned out well. Everything is set fine, the grit's all glued down, and it's ready for the gaming table or for display. But there's a problem. That is the space between the river and the road. You see, none of my scattered terrain will really fit. And it leaves some open space, and it's not that interesting. Now I could put the rocks we built earlier here, and they fit okay, but they still don't do much to accentuate the road as a whole. So I want to do something that'll incorporate the road into the terrain and make it visually interesting. I went and took a look on some resources online, and since this is roughly a World War II theme board, I often saw that roadways in World War II were littered with either abandoned vehicles or destroyed vehicles. So, this led me to come up with an idea. I think I'll put some trucks and cars in various states of disrepair on the road. This should look interesting and also block some lines of sight. Right now, with the COVID-19 situation, it's pretty hard to lay my hands on new models at the friendly local game store, and it was difficult to find a source for 1940s vehicles online. So I went ahead and just printed them on my printer. I found the file on Thingiverse. Once they were done printing, I pulled them off the build plate, and I prepared them. I followed, of course, all the safety instructions, wearing rubber gloves, cleaning the models after the fact with rubbing alcohol, and so forth. Then, when they were clean and dry, I cut them off the supports with my sprue cutters and cleaned up all the scars and extra resin bits with a knife. With the assembly and preparation done, I mounted them on some lengths of sprue so that they'd be easier to hold during painting. I have a separate video on that, I'll put a link up. And then I loaded my airbrush with some Vallejo primer and a little flow aid. I mixed it up. Then I began to undercoat the models, and I decided to work in a batch because I wanted to do a fairly large number of vehicles. When the primer had dried, I grabbed some Armor Brown and I uh, sprayed it over all the trucks. Now I mixed a mid-tone from a 50-50 mix of Armor Brown and Sand Yellow. I sprayed the mix on each panel, leaving the Armor Brown showing in the deeper recesses, and tried to focus more towards the corners of each panel. Now with that coat dry, I grabbed my airbrush again and using pure sand yellow, I went around the very edges of each of the panels and any of the upper surfaces where I felt the sunlight would fall on the models. Taking earth brown, I went on to working on the bed of the trucks. I put it on my palette and I decided to water it down a little bit since I was going to brush it on. Then I went ahead and brushed it on over top of the armor brown. I didn't worry too much about it being streaky because I was going to dry brush it shortly and I knew that the extra brush strokes would uh, create texture in the paint. So then I went and got deck tan out 
I also put it in my palette. But in this case, I'm going to use it as a dry brush so I don't put any water and I use it straight from the bottle. So using a coarse bristle brush, I run my brush around the outside of the uh, model and then I start dry brushing the cab with a light flicking motion. The objective here is just to get the corners to pick up the pigment from the paint and just create an idea of where the light would fall on the reflective surfaces and upper surfaces of the vehicle. All right, that's pretty good. With that done, I got out Iraqi sand. I use this to dry brush too. So I didn't mix any water with it, and I went through exactly the same process, but this time over the wood paneling of the truck bed. With all this dry brushing applied, the model began to desaturate a little bit. So I went and got out my strong tone shader from Army Painter. And I decided I was going to use it to reintroduce some uh, brown tones back into the wood on the uh, truck bed. So this stuff is uh, sort of like a combination of a filter and a shading wash. And all you really do is just dab it on. Kind of unique. It's acrylic base and it's a very good product. It does dry a little glossy. So I dab it on. Just re-establish the definition on the wood and get it back to a brown shade. And then I left that to dry. It takes about 20 minutes. Now I'm prepared to start the shading on the truck and I decided to do this with enamels. So the first thing is I got out some satin acrylic varnish and uh, prepared it in my airbrush. Put it in the airbrush. And I added some water just to help it flow a bit. And the ever important flow improver. And I mixed it. And uh, a varnish layer is usually important over acrylics before you move on to enamels. It just helps protect it because enamels will damage the acrylics if you're not careful. I put two coats on and I sprayed it from all angles, tried to be very thorough with it. Now I got out my MIG dark wash which is an enamel wash. It's a very, very dark brown or black. And the yellow cap is full of mineral spirits to act as a thinner. I put some on a brush. And I always use an old brush for this. Uh, enamels are really hard on the brush, so I don't use a good one. And I run the wash into the crevices where shadows would settle on the vehicle. And the wash generally just flows with capillary action. You can uh, moisten it a bit with your thinner to help it spread. All right, so I leave that to dry for about five minutes, and then I get a big flat brush, moisten it back in the thinner, and go back over the parts that I just washed. If I see any spots where the wash has flowed away from the corners where I want it, or if there's tide marks that cause it to gather, I can just take the thinner right to the model and uh, fix it. So if you've got, like here, some wash sitting on top of uh, another color, you can just brush it back and push it into the crevices using the thinner. Or you can use a tapping motion and basically just wipe out where the uh, wash is gathered. 
along here. I'm going to soften the edge on this dark line at the top. And here's a spot. I'm just going to use a brushing motion and wipe it right out. All right, with that done, I grab uh, my black acrylic paint, put it in my palette, and add some water. I'm going to use this to clean up the model now. So the uh, washes have all dried, and I go in and redefine some of the areas that are going to get detail work. So I paint the windows black, for instance. Paint the, repaint the tires black and I just make sure I get in there fairly carefully because this is going to help form a little bit of a border around the windows in particular. I'm going to remember to do the back window. It's important to be thorough at this stage. You can cover up any little mistakes you've made previously and put down a good foundation to layer your other colors on top of. All right, so that's that. Now I get some deck tan out. Don't need a lot for this. And I'm gonna get a very light gray out. And what I wanna do is I wanna mix the two together until I have something a little lighter than the dry brush highlights I put on. And I want to get it a little watery because I need this to flow. I'm going to use it to put detailed scratches and dents and little nicks into the surface of the model to uh, basically set it up for weathering and chipping. All right, pretty satisfied here with how it flows. So I put a little on a really fine brush and I go in and uh, start putting little nicks and dents, scratches, anywhere I think there'd be high wear on the uh, vehicle or where it may have suffered some damage. It's so like here on the hinges, of course around the fenders where you're going to have some stone chips, maybe just some scratching here at the cab. You can create interest with this, makes it look a little more realistic. Just make sure not to overdo it. Now here, I'm actually covering up some imperfections in the surface that the printer left. I might as well just capitalize on that and make the imperfections look like scratches and gouges. All right, when I was happy with that, I get out uh, my hull red paint. This is a real deep red kind of rusty color. I really like working with this paint. I put it down on my palette. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to be working quite precisely with this, so I mix it with some water, just a couple drops until I like how it flows. And then I go back and begin putting the dots and the scratches together with the uh, hull red in the middle. So along the scratch I go, I put the hull red down the middle. Good. Sometimes I like to little, tap little dots onto the model so it looks like a cluster of scratches or dents. And again, I'm just trying to make it look like it's a wear surface. And we're actually using the model we've painted so far basically as a canvas to add these chips. All right, now we go back to enamel. So I grab some uh, crusted rust deposits and some light rust wash. And again, getting up my mineral spirits, I take the light rust wash and I begin just brushing it over where the dents, the chips are, along the seams where you might see rust gathering. I just layer it on there and let it dry. Here I've moved to the uh, dark crusted rust, so it's much uh, darker, and I just brush it on. Don't worry about the strange coloration. We're going to fix it in a few minutes with mineral spirits. Now I've taken a flat brush and loaded it with thinner and I begin going back over the model applying a tapping motion which uh, blends out the rust into the body of the model and removes it from anywhere it shouldn't be. Generally just draws it out. It takes a bit of practice to be able to use enamels this way but when you get used to it it's great. All right, 
Now it's time to do the windows. So I get out the colors for the windows, the various shades of blue and white. Now I won't get into a lot of detail in this here. Painting windows on vehicles like this is a little specific and I have another video on it. So I'll put the uh, link to that video up and you can go see that video to get the specific details on how to do this technique. It's not hard, but it just takes a little while, so it deserves its own video. All right, so I go get some dark sea gray. It's a nice dark gray. It's one of my favorite colors to work with. And using it, I just go paint it onto the bumpers this metal strut up between the lights and uh, I give a light dusting of it by a dry brush to the wheels just to return some uh, contrast and definition to the cleats on the wheels and also to the bolts. Going back to my enamel setup I get my mineral spirits back out and I grab uh, brown earth deposits by a &K. This is an interesting product it's uh, got a bit of texture suspended in an enamel wash. So I go and apply it by washing it back onto the wheels and anywhere where mud might gather. After that's had about 20 minutes to dry, I get out some Iraqi sand, put it back on my palette. I'm going to dry brush with this so I don't add any water. And I just go dry brush it on over top of the uh, mud effects right onto the wheels. Again, looking to just rebuild the definition in the wheels themselves. Then when that's done, I grab my airbrush matte varnish. This is a homemade one. And I spray on two coats matte varnish just to seal it all down and protect it. And here's the finished product. We've created plenty of shadows and depth with the enamel and the weathering effects have made it look appropriately beat up and like it's ready to be placed on our battlefield. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is growing. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly on Sundays and Thursdays. We're your source for regular model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you have not subscribed, make sure you do, and press the bell button to receive immediate notifications so you don't have to miss out. Miniature Landscape Hobbies has a Patreon account. If you would like to partner with us to help us maintain our regular content, please consider subscribing to one of our supporter levels, or make a one-time donation. There are many interesting rewards for our, our patrons, so we can help you improve your own hobby skills. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.